Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Brian, we're going to talk about the least discussed primary nutrient. You know, we talk a lot about nitrogen. We even talk quite a bit about phosphorus, but potassium deserves more of the conversation. Well, Darren, your voice sounds a little scratchy today. Are you getting sick on me or I something? tell you what, you know, it gets that time of year, <laughs> you, you end up getting a little cold. Well, you know, I think about uh, I'm going to try this next year to be a little healthier, I think. And that's one of my New Year's resolutions. I've got a bunch more that relate to ag, and I know Darren's got a few too. We wanted to talk about those today. Well, we've got all that, of course. You know, we're never going to stop killing the weed of the week, so we'll have to discuss this week's weed. But first, here's today's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. As a non-farmer, you're probably familiar with what a combine is. It's one of the most basic things that we operate on the farm. But what you may not know is there are different types of corn heads out there. And today we wanted to explain what a chopping corn head is in our Farm Basics time. Well, a combine is, of course, the machine that harvests the grain out of the field. But to do that, you have to attach a different head on the front of the combine, depending on which crop you're trying to harvest. Now, when it comes to corn, it presents some different challenges because you often have an eight to 10 foot tall plant that you have to deal with just to get this one little ear off the plant. Well, hopefully it's one big ear. Anyway, you've got this great big stalk. So when farmers would go through and harvest, they'd have these great big pieces of stalk laying out in the field and it was really tough to manage when they wanted to come through and plant. They'd have these big long pieces of stalk that'd get caught up on the planter or on a tillage tool and they'd just end up with a mess. Well, what farmers used to do in the old days by old days, I mean like 10 years ago, Darren, is they would go through and they'd harvest their corn and then they'd have what we would call a chopper that would come right afterwards. And many different farmers will call it many different things, but this basically small piece of equipment would come afterwards and chop up all the stalks. So that's what we used to do, but it was a separate trip across the field. Now that little chopping task that we had to do after harvest, they could put guys like me on it because you didn't have to have a very skilled operator well, or anything have to like run that. Straight or anything that's like right. That. You can go that's all right. over the place. <laughs> you just go. So anyway, it was pretty easy for farmers to do that, but obviously it's another trip across the field. Well, now with the bigger and more modern combines, they have more than enough horsepower and enough capacity in them to handle even bigger corn heads. So now they're doing this chopping right at the same time with the corn head. Well, the other thing, Brian, is not only saving a trip across the field, but now you can actually chop the stalks before you run them over with the right. machine. So you end up with a field that looks pretty nice like this one. I mean, obviously on the end rows, you're gonna run over some things, but out in the middle of the field, it's nice and even, and it's gonna be really easy for us to work with this and plant this field next spring. Well, when it comes to that planting it next spring, thing, what ends up happening is if a farmer is going along in the spring with his planter and there are big pieces of residue, it's easy to, with the planter, get that kind of caught in the seed trench and we call that hairpinning the residue where basically the seed ends up dropping on top of that corn stalk that's laid over because the corn stalk doesn't properly get sliced. Well, when we chop the corn stalks in the fall with the corn head, not only do we avoid most of that hairpinning residue issue in the spring, but it also allows bacteria to much faster break down the residue that's left in the field. Well, the other thing, Brian, you mentioned how much bigger these corn heads are getting, so they're able to harvest more rows of corn at the same time. Well, as they get great big heads, now all of a sudden road transport becomes an issue. So some of the newer corn heads now fold up. So to get a chopping corn head that does that extra job of chopping and also folding, it's pretty complex equipment, but it's something that's really been beneficial for our farm because now we can drive down the road, just fold that corn head in, so our travel width is really no wider than the combine itself. So once again, with a great big combine, you have to have a different head on the combine, depending on the type of crop that you're harvesting. And today, specifically, we talked about corn heads and chopping corn heads where we can actually harvest the grain and chop the residue up immediately. One other thing you'll be chopping up in your fields is weeds. Hopefully our weed of the week, you can just wipe it out by chopping it up. No, you're not going to get that lucky. We'll have to show you how to control it coming up later in the show. Everything is better to the power of Nutrisphere N. Proven to shield against leaching, volatilization, and denitrification, Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager helps you maximize the efficiency of your nitrogen applications. 
In fact, research shows that in 184 corn trials, Nutrispirin increases yields by an average of 13.2 bushels per acre. Do the math for yourself. Contact your local fertilizer dealer today and take your operation to the power of Nutrispirin. Speed, strength, and efficiency make Capello corn heads a head above the rest. Built with polymer components that exceed industry standards, Capello corn heads continue to push the boundaries for maximizing grain retention while using less energy. Visit CapelloUSA.com and learn more about Capello's state-of-the-art chopping technology that cuts cleaner, allowing your horsepower to remain where it belongs, with your combine, so you can harvest faster in all weather conditions. Add to that an amazing folding feature and it's clear to see why Capello is a head above the rest. Looking to maximize yield? QuickRoots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. QuickRoots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. QuickRoots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. Advanced farming systems from Case IH helps producers be ready. Our precision farming solution is less complex and built right into our equipment. Factory integrated with open architecture, AFS works with all of your implements, no matter what color they are. And our team of dedicated specialists are here to keep you rolling 24-7, 365. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? I'm ready. Hey, Brian, it's Farm Guy. What brings you to our farm? I watch Ag PhD every week and know that you guys do a lot of field testing. We test a lot of products here, and when something works, we use it on our farm. Oh, like agriculture liquid fertilizers. Yeah. You guys started talking about ProGerminator and SureK on the show a few years ago. But I was skeptical. You're always skeptical. Should Brian be skeptical of agro-liquid fertilizers? Find out at www.farmguytv.com. Perhaps the most important nutrient in the United States that is not being, in our opinion, talked about enough is potassium. Every farmer knows about NPK, 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 but Darren, I just think we're ridiculously short in most fields on potassium. Well, all these nutrients are important, and, and yes, you know, the secondary and micronutrients are extremely important to crop growth, but when we're talking about primary nutrients, these are ones that our plants are using a lot of. And if we're short in one of those, I don't care what you do with the rest of your program, everything else is thrown out the window because we've already capped your yield. Okay, let me just give you my first example. This summer, I know we had a drought, or this last summer, all right? But still, we had a lot of lodging issues. In other words, corn that was falling over as I drove around all over the country. The number one reason why corn ends up lodging is obviously because the stock doesn't get quite as thick, right? Well, one of the key components in that is potassium. If you have higher levels of potassium that's getting into the plant, then you're most likely going to have a much thicker stock. Well, there's no question about that, Brian. I remember back in 2003, I went out to see Francis Childs at his farm on the east side of Iowa. And so I'm driving all across Iowa and I'm looking at all the field signs at the end of cornfields. And I kept seeing this one really popular number by one of the major brands. And it's falling over, falling over, falling over. And when I get to Francis's farm, he has a sign at the end of his field with that same number and it looks great. And, and I had met Francis several times before and so I already knew him a little bit. And when I got out of my truck, Francis said, oh, Darren, I'm glad to see you. What do you think of my corn? And I said, well, first of all, Francis, I saw the sign at the end of the field. It can't be that number, can it? Because all the way across Iowa, I saw that one falling down. He's like, yeah, but have you seen my soil tests? I've got fertility here, Darren. I've got a stock that's two or three times as big as these other guys because I'm feeding my crop. And everybody thinks about feeding that ear and what actually that crop is gonna remove from the ground when you're hauling the grain off the field. They forget about what it takes to feed and maintain a healthy stock. Well, Darren mentioned Francis Childs. Francis was the first farmer in the United States to ever raise over 400 bushel per acre corn. Well, if you wanna go back quite a few years before that, the first farmer who ever raised over 300 bushel corn, his name was Herman Warsaw. And if you look back at what Herman Warsaw's soil tests were, in fact, I did look at them just last winter. I went back and kind of reviewed this information and showed a bunch of farmers, and the only response I got was, wow. That's, that's a lot of fertility that he's got in his soil. And one of the key things there was he had lots of potassium. I can't stress this to you enough. If you think you're gonna raise 300 or 400 bushel corn someday, 
Heck, even what you're raising today, 200, 250 bushel corn, just think of all those big ears, those big heavy ears that have to sit on a stalk. Unless you have a good sized stalk, it's not gonna hold them very long. And it's not gonna hold them effectively, especially when we have to deal with the winds that we deal with in the Midwest. One of the challenges, Brian, is if you mess up that spring program or the fall program, there really isn't much for a rescue. You can try doing some foliar feed, and if you're just a little bit short, you may be able to help yourself out that way. But you've gotta start right off from the beginning with a great program. And then the other thing is, a lot of the potassium you apply it may not be totally available to your crop. So here's what I want you to do right now. If you have an iPhone, I want you to download the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app. If you don't, just go on the internet to agphd.com with the resources page and look at how much potassium different crops remove. I think you'll be amazed at crops like soybeans, for example. If you have a 60 bushel soybean crop, did you know that that 60 bushel crop, just with the grain only, is gonna remove about 84 units of K2O potassium, 84 units, just to replace that alone, just to replace it, not build your soil, but replacement, you'd have to put out about 150 pounds of potash every time you plant beans every time, okay? On your corn, if you had 200 bushel corn, that's gonna remove roughly 60 units of K2O potassium. So just to replace that, you'd have to have 100 pounds of potash. Now certainly there are many other sources, I'm just using potash because that's commonly known and commonly referred to, but my point is simply this. You've gotta look at how much potassium your crop is removing and at least replace that. And if you don't have your soils very well built up, you probably should start trying to build in addition to just replacing nutrients. Well, here's one of the problems we saw this year. When we look at a drought year like 2012 was for almost everybody, what dries out first? Well, the top few inches of soil dry out first. And as soon as those top few inches are dry, if all your fertility is up at the top, and you really haven't been building your soil up, when you look down deeper in that soil profile, there's very little potassium that's available for your crop. So when we have to deal with conditions like this where it can get dry, you need to start putting that fertility down deeper. Potassium isn't one of those nutrients that leaches down on its own. So by doing something like strip till, where you're dropping that potassium down eight or 10 inches deep in the soil, you're just speeding up nature by 10, 20, 30, 40 years by getting all that fertility down deep. Now when it dries out in the top few inches, your roots are going down looking for water. They're also looking for food. They can find that potassium and you can keep growing rapidly. Now when you do have a drought year like this, if you put out, let's say, dry potash, how much of that dry potash do you think is actually gonna break down? What is potash really? It's a rock. How quickly is rock gonna break down most years that are real dry? Not very quickly at all. So my point is simply this. I'm fine if you wanna use a bunch of potash on your farm, we use a fair amount on our farm, but we're also supplementing that with liquid fertilizer because I don't know if I'm gonna have a dry year next year or a wet year, and I wanna have some potassium that's available early in the season, and you can't put potash right in furrow because the salt content is too high. So we're trying to use different methods to get our potassium out there. We'll use some manure, we'll use some potash, we'll certainly use some liquid fertilizer with low salt indexes, and there are other forms of potassium that we might consider using as well. The point is just make sure you're getting enough fertilizer out there and it's readily available. Well, here's the other thing too, Brian, is that some farmers will say, all right, I'll put that potassium out ahead of this year's corn crap. Next year, I'll plant soybeans, and ah, uh, the soybeans will just mine out whatever's well, left. Well, that's well, fine. That's fine as long as you put enough out there to start with. But the problem is a lot of guys aren't putting enough out to start with. So just in my example of 60 bushel soybeans and 200 bushel corn, just to replace what you're gonna remove in a two-year cycle, you'd have to use 250 pounds of potash. 250 pounds of potash. And how many people around the country do that? Very, very few. You know, when you look at a lot of years like this and you say, okay, who really had good yields? A lot of times it was the guys that had manure. You know why they had good yields? It's because they had more than enough fertility because a lot of guys who have manure look at manure as a waste product. They're just trying to throw it out there. So they, in effect, over fertilize or what they consider over fertilizing, I consider it what they should do. And in a lot of cases, when we're just trying to put commercial fertilizer out there and do what you suggested and just say, well, just we're gonna put fertilizer out for the corn, hope the beans recover everything else. It just doesn't cut it over a long period of time. Now here's one other thing that you may not have thought about this year. If you're bailing up stocks, the stocks actually have a good amount of potassium in them. Now, granted, if you do get some plentiful rainfall, you can flush a lot of that potassium out of the stocks and right back into the soil. But if you're bailing up the stocks right behind the combine, chances are you're hauling away quite a bit of potassium. Yeah, but people know that already. Our only point is when you're doing that, just make sure you're hauling the manure back or put on more commercial fertilizer. So once again, we cannot stress this to you enough. 
if you're looking at raising better crops in the future, you gotta look hard at potassium. And I know it's not talked about nearly as much as nitrogen, but it is just as important to your crop as nitrogen, phosphorus, and any other nutrient. So really take a look going into 2013 at how much potassium you're going to remove, at how much potassium you need to apply, and just think about, okay, overall, I wanna have a great crop that actually stands all the way to harvest and have some better yields than I've gotten in the past. If you wanna have some fantastic yields, one thing you can't skimp on is weed control. Can you identify this week's weed? You can't fill a barrel any fuller than its lowest stave. And your crops can't do any better than the nutrient that's in shortest supply. Your yield potential is only as good as the weakest nutrient in your fertilizer program. Give your crops more than just NPK. Prescription apply all the micronutrients your crop needs. Each one customized for your crop's potential. Microlink, linking yield to potential. Harvest season will soon be over, but don't put away your equipment until you bring it into Titan Machinery, your Case IH dealer. Take advantage of our Uptime Maintenance Program. Uptime is Titan's preventative maintenance service designed to eliminate costly downtime during the short working season. Our technicians average more than 10 years of experience and use a comprehensive checklist to find problems before they slow you down. Call Titan Machinery today to schedule your Uptime service so you can spend the winter worry-free. Titan Machinery and Case IH, better solutions. Back in 1966, Advanced Drainage Systems, Inc. was the first company to start manufacturing plastic agricultural drainage pipe in the United States. And today, ADS continues our leadership with superior pipe production and service capabilities. Our roots are firmly entrenched in the agriculture industry, and we're committed to helping farmers grow their business. With 54 manufacturing plants and 24 distribution yards throughout the world, you can count on ADS and our green-striped pipe to be there when you need us. Advanced Drainage Systems, the green-striped pipe you can count on. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit FarmLogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. For lower costs and higher production, Mandaco leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier and less costly. Spring or fall, the Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call 877-915-8790. Well, today, Darren and I thought we'd do a segment that's a little different than what we've ever done before. What are our New Year's resolutions? And you know, Darren, uh, I might try to work out a little bit more. I don't know that I really need a diet anymore or any of that kind of stuff for next year. I'm thinking a lot more about ag and my job on the farm. Well, I am too, Brandon. You know, when it comes to uh, the job that we're doing with our fields, and there's a lot of things we're doing right, and there's a lot of things we've changed over the last few years, but there are a few more changes we could make that would improve our farm and make it even better. So the first one I was thinking, Brian, is do a better job with our planter. You know, we've got some fields this year where our stand was a little spotty. Now, granted, we had some extreme weather. We had a little bit of soil crusting yeah, in a few fields, well, like I, right here where we're okay, standing. Okay, this is one thing when I'm talking to farmers, I love the comment. Well, this year the weather was tough. Guess what? Every year the weather's tough. No, so you've just... got to, we have to figure out ways around that because we know something's going to happen. We know at some point during spring planting, we're going to have a hard packing rain. We know we're going to have some residue to deal with. We know we're going to have some operators who are tired when they're running the planter. I mean, we have to plan around these things because they happen every year, let's be honest. I'm just saying when we have extreme weather, it kind of exposes things. And yeah, yep. it may look a little bit worse this year, but you know, maybe we had a 2% problem for many years and we never noticed. But now when we have a 5% problem, Problem, hey, it stands out to us a little bit more. So Agreed. that was my first point. All right, what else you got? The other things I was thinking about, when it comes to soil sampling on our farm, we're going to do more grid sampling. We've yep. done a lot of zone sampling on our farm, but it's just getting a lot cheaper and easier to do grid sampling yourself. Now you can go out with a phone app and do grid sampling on your field and get good recommendations and variable rate your fertility if you want to. I think it's fantastic. We're going to do more of that. Okay, so here are my five things. Number one, it's speak up about agriculture even more. Now, obviously, 
Darren and I have a nice platform here in Ag PhD to talk about agriculture, but it's especially reaching out to non-farmers to tell them more about what we're doing on the farm. Honestly though, it's not just us. I mean, it needs to be every one of you too. Okay, number two was scout our fields more often. For me, it's hard because I'm really busy. I got a lot of stuff going on and sometimes I am not out in our fields as much as I should be. Number three, learn more about fertility. What I hope to do every single year is learn about just a few more things that I can bring to the average farmer out there to say, oh, I didn't know that before, but if I do this, just tweak this other little thing with my fertility program, I can do a better job on the farm. And then the last couple I've got is not specific to agriculture, but basically I just wanna make sure that I'm spending plenty of time with my wife and kids. And number five, I want to become a better coach. I really like coaching, Darren. It's That's been good. a lot I of fun. Too. Yep, I, I coaching youth sports. I've been coaching uh, baseball and basketball and football, and I really enjoy that. And even though I'm super busy, I just think it's really important that everybody spends time with not only their kids, but just the kids that are going to basically run our country in future generations so they have some good influences. And one of the key messages I'm always telling my players is, look, you can accomplish anything you want but you're not gonna do it if you're lazy. You're only going to accomplish it if you're working hard all the time. You know, I saw a quote, Brian, I believe it's from Will Rogers, and I'm gonna mess it up just a little bit, so it's not an exact quote, but it went something to this regard, that you may be on the right track, but if you're just sitting still, you're only gonna get run over. And I thought that was pretty good. You know, even if you're doing things right on the farm, you gotta take that next step and try and be just a little bit better, because if you keep doing things exactly the same, well, you're gonna be falling behind what everybody else is doing. Well, in one of the areas you could potentially fall behind is control of our Weed of the Week. It's a little bit unusual for us here in the Midwest to talk about it, but we're gonna cover our weed right after this. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Mandaco. For lower costs and higher production, Mandaco leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. See your Mandaco dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call 877-915-8790. Our Weed of the Week is Amazon Sprangle Top, and Darren, I can honestly tell you, I've never scouted for this on our farm. Well, no, we don't have it here, <laughs> but we don't grow rice either. And you know, if you had rice, that would be probably about the worst weed you could imagine because it's resistant to the ACC Ace products, it's very difficult to control, there's really no post-emerge option unless you go Clearfield rice. And for that reason, a lot of the market has moved to Clearfield, because you can use New Path on it, it's okay, but you really need to start with a good pre. And by pre, basically you're talking command, right? Yeah, we'd like to see command down pre. Now there are some other ones that could work as well, but command seems to be the most effective and also safest to the rice to get a different mode of action than you may use in some of your other crops. Now the good news here is if Amazon Sprangle Top does spread to your corn or soybean or wheat fields, we have some options. There are some real good options that are commonly used. So in corn, for example, what would you pick? Well, you could use something like Harness, Surpass, Dual Outlook as your start or your foundation product. Then you come back post-emerge, you've got Roundup or you've got Liberty if you plant the right hybrids. And that makes it easy. Same thing in soybeans. You can use, you know, Treflan, Sonland, Prowl, come back in crop with something like Select Max. That could do a nice job for you. Or you can just have Roundup Ready crops or Liberty Link crops and burn it off with Roundup or Liberty. The problem in wheat though is a lot of the post-emerge grass killers are ACC Ace products and they're probably not going to work if you've got ACC Ace resistant Sprangle Top. So what you're going to have to go to is one of the Everest or prepare options. Well, the other thing you can do is go Clearfield Wheat and then yep. you could use Beyond and that'll be pretty good. But again, you really need to start with something down. So I would recommend Prepare Down as a soil applied product. Well, once again, our Weed of the Week is Amazon Sprangle Top. Do what you can to control it on your farm. That's it for our Weed of the Week, but stay tuned. Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. Advanced farming systems from Case IH helps producers be ready. AFS is less complex and built right into our equipment, and our team of dedicated specialists are here to keep you rolling. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? Inoculant application for soybeans is a job you can do on your farm. We'll explain the best equipment setup for inoculant in today's Iron Talk. Soybean inoculant is a common term for rhizobia bacteria. They colonize around soybean roots and bring nitrogen from the air into the plant. The trick is to apply them to the seed and get them into the soil before they perish. We've had a lot of questions so far this winter about in furrow application of liquid inoculants versus seed applied. Also, questions have come about regarding the effectiveness of extenders which claim to allow application of inoculant up to 45 or even 60 days before planting. Here's what we found. 
Inoculants must be in close proximity to the main tap root of the plant to be the most effective. For this reason, seed applied treatments are the most effective. With infero liquid applications, you will likely need five times as much product to equal the results of seed treatments. We've also seen much better results when applying inoculant within hours of planting. Planting seed days or weeks later after treating the seed results in bacteria mortality of up to 90%, but bridging and clumping of seed is always a concern. Best practice is to spray inoculant on at multiple points in a brush auger or potentially a belt veyer or cup system. The keys are to use multiple nozzles to get improved coverage of the seed and then to have some sort of mixing as well to coat the seed on all sides. Doing it a few hours in advance of use and running the seed through a brush auger or belt veyer after treating will greatly reduce if not eliminate clumping leading to maximum performance from the inoculant and the seed. That's all for today's Iron Talk and now back to the show. Don't miss this year's free Ag PhD Winter Workshops. At Ag PhD, we're all about helping you raise better crops and earn more money on your farm. We'll talk about drought proofing your crop, weed and rootworm resistance, how to improve your fertility program and on-farm trials and field tests. We'll also tell you the good and bad about the new products and technologies on the market and give you our recommendations for pest control and a host of different crops. You'll get some insights on new farm regulations and tax laws going forward. And as always, you'll receive a free agronomy manual. Learn more and sign up today at agphd.com. Micronutrients are not optional for plants, they're essential. TJ Micromix is a profit-proven management tool that ensures the availability of essential secondary and micronutrients. Formulated as a dry granule or liquid, TJ Micromix is plant available, easy to mix and apply. The synergistic fertilizer mix delivers consistent yield response on a variety of crops by complementing an NPK fertilizer program. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your fertilizer dealer and get your TJ Micromix today. For lower costs and higher production, see your Mandaco dealer. Ask about the best production built land roller on the market. Mandaco, simple design for easy transport and easy use. 12 to 62 foot widths, heavy duty 4x8x3 by by inch tube frame and now available with a steerable wing wheel. Mandaco land rollers, improve soil to seed contact, faster more uniform germination, less moisture loss. Eliminate downtime due to rocks. See your Mandaco dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call 877-915-8790. Advanced farming systems from Case IH helps producers be ready. Our precision farming solution is less complex and built right into our equipment. Factory integrated with open architecture, AFS works with all of your implements, no matter what color they are. And our team of dedicated specialists are here to keep you rolling 24-7, 365. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? I'm ready. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. Introducing the all new Backsaver Swing Hopper Auger Mover. Backsavers have interchangeable parts which allows you easy access to move or swing your augers to fit your harvesting needs. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for today's show, but be sure to join us again next time for another Weed of the Week, Iron Talk, Farm Basics, and a whole lot more. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Subsurface drainage tile is used around your home and in farmers' fields to remove excess water safely. As water filters down through several feet of soil, it is purified naturally. To learn more about clean water leaving farm fields, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.